All right, time for uh, more cheap heat discussion. Um, this is a video in which I talk about records that are really good that you can get for not too much money and, and, and oftentimes not leaving your house thanks to various mail order uh, online businesses. But it's always more fun to go out and dig live. Um, boy, I'll tell you, I just can't wait till this sickness thing is over so we can go out and paw through records feverishly like we always have. Anyway, what we're listening to right now is a real cheap heater. Oddly enough, it's sort of a small label private issue thing out of Baltimore or DC, that area. And it's a group called Child's Play, their first and only LP, self-titled. It's just a quartet, piano, guitar, bass, and drums, but it's it's really good. Um, I like the, the name of the guitarist is Mud with three Ds. I, I like that. <laughs> anyway, check it out. I've seen a number of these online for like 10 bucks or less. And it, if you like what you're hearing, pick it up. It's, it's that kind of record that's going to blow you away, but it's the kind of thing that's going to be pleasant to listen to pretty much any time. I think. So what I've tried to do, you know, I've, I've made so many of these videos, I've kind of lost track of, of what I've talked about and what I haven't. And, um, and I'm hoping to hit some of the classics here. There's some albums that, I mean, I was out actually looking for records yesterday, out in the wild, looking for records with my mask on because it's coronavirus time. Um, and uh, hand sanitizer, all that. Anyway, I was out there in the wild looking for records. And um, I ran, I literally ran across several of these and they were all cheap still. And this is 2020, the year 2020. So um, I'm not blowing smoke here, folks. These could be had. Um, if you've got a certain thing in your mind that you want, sometimes it's good to make a substitution if you don't feel like dropping like 50 bucks or whatever. Anyway, let's get to it. Um, these are records I see around a lot. They were released in the U.S. I'm in the U.S., as you can tell. Um, and they're all really worthwhile. Um, they're by a fellow named Michael Mantler, who was married to Carla Blay for years. Not anymore. And he was like, once this sort of, he's from Austria, and he's like this furrowed brow, intellectual dude who made very challenging, very difficult uh, orchestral music, still does. The thing is, is he made a bunch of other kinds of records that were sort of passed over. People don't seem to talk about these movies. Is uh, This is an amazing record, and just look at the personnel. Do I have to even talk you into getting this? If I have to, now maybe you don't like jazz rock fusion, I don't know, but I mean, the lineup on this is killer. The tunes are killer. Everything about this record is great. They did a follow-up with slightly different personnel called More Movies, this doesn't have Tony Williams on drums, it has D Sharp, who's uh, kind of a minimalistic drummer but still gets the job done. Gary Window on saxophone, Steve Swallow on bass, and Philip Catherine on guitar instead of Larry Coriel. This is really great too, but um, the first one with Tony Williams and Larry Coriel is the one to get. Mantler's kept a very high level of, I think, jazz rock fusion greatness. Um, seems to like the real minimal type of drumming though. Um, this was one of his early records on ECM called Something There, as you can read. And this has got Nick Mason from Pink Floyd on drums. He's really going all the way with the minimal drumming uh, 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 tip. But this is great. This has got Mike Stern on guitar. And it's just, it's, it's not a happy record. It's very brooding. Uh, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. And, and he's followed this up with several other records um, and CDs, really. Um, really got to check it out. It's, Michael Mantler's work is very singular. Um, nobody else sounds like him, but it's still fusion. Really like it a lot. Um, all could be had for very little money. Um, I'm going to sort of get into more European stuff. Um, but first, I want to talk about 
possibly the mother of all cheap heat records, and it's this. It's by a group called Good God. It's the only record they ever recorded. And it doesn't really give you much of a clue of, of what kind of music this is, except for there's a Zappa cover on it. Well, this is a really, really excellent progressive rock, jazz rock fusion record. Um, it came out in 1972 on Atlantic. Um, almost all the copies I've seen are promos or cutouts or both. And, and it's from Philly. It's a Philly thing. I'm from Philly originally, so I'm very proud of this record. <laughs> Anyway, most of these guys were associated with uh, Sigma Sound Studios, which is where all the great um, soul and R&B hits of the 70s were produced. The whole Philly sound came out of there, but this is not about that. This is about jazz rock fusion and jamming and just crazy hippiness all around. And I saw this yesterday for like 10 bucks, which in these days, I mean, I'm sure you could find it for less, but, um, but 10 bucks isn't much for an old LP that's in really good shape. Produced by Skip Drinkwater, who went on to produce a number of records that I'll probably talk about in future editions of this, of this uh, thing, whatever it is I'm doing, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I don't really know if any of the... I mean, if you look up these guys on Discogs, they, their name pops up on a lot of different records, but they're not like... There's no like ringers on this record. Uh, Zeno Sparkles on guitar and vocals. Cotton Kent on keyboards and vibraphone and sax. Uh, Greg Scott on saxophones and the brothers John and Hank Ransom on bass and drums. Don't know of any of these guys. There's no ringers. Uh, Johnny Almond from Mark Almond does a cameo on uh, saxophone on a few tracks. Larry Washington, who is on all the, all the great Philly sound hits on congas. So there's a couple of sort of marginal ringers, but this is, you really got to get this record. It's really awesome. And it's still cheap. It's still cheap. I think it might have been a few bumps in the road there because I think it's been very uh, sampled. But that said, good God, you got to get it because you're going to put it on. You're going to say good God. All right. So back to European type stuff. Um, some of these are U.S. presses of Euro records, but... Um, most of these could be had for cheap in Europe and in the US and wherever else you might happen to be. Um, I'm constantly reminded that I'm speaking to an international audience here. Anyway, this record, I didn't like this record when I first got it, but I got it because it had all my favorite guys on it. It had DDA Lockwood on violin, Yannick Top on bass, Christian Vander on drums, possibly one of the greatest drummers ever to walk the face of the earth, the leader of Magma, and Benoit Weidman on keyboards. Love all these guys. They've all done uh, separate albums on their own, multiple numbers of them, um, all great. Um, like I said, Christian Vander was in Magma. So there's a heavy, ma all these guys are in Magma actually at one point, but Christian Vander's the leader of it. So this is kind of a Magma offshoot. And um, surprisingly, it stayed pretty inexpensive over the years. I've had this record for a long time. And I used to not like it a whole lot. It sounded a little bit too jammy, a little bit too noodly, but I pulled it out. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm constantly going through records and I'd say about half of what I listen to, I'm thinking, should I sell this or should I keep it? And I consider this a keeper now. And it's a great record, um, long jammy, side long track, um, really cool. Lots of analog synth, lots of roads, great drumming, um, gets out there at times, but, uh, if you're into the long jammy synthy tracks, get it. There's no guitar on it, but you don't really miss it. DDA Lockwood's all over it. Um, just a cool record that could be had for a few euros. I talked in a previous video about um, Alphonse Buzan, and he's he's done a bunch of really cool stuff um, on his own and with other musicians. Um, there's a bunch of guys in Europe that have played with Alphonse Buzan in his band and he's been in their bands and blah, 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 blah. Um, one of those guys is a keyboard player whose work I really enjoy. His name is Jasper Vantoff and he's uh, from the Netherlands and he appears on a lot of really great records. Uh, I basically 
buy anything he's on. He did do some pop sort of stuff in the 80s that I'm not so crazy about, but these records are great. Um, this is However, it's on MPS, once again, one of my favorite labels. And it's got Alphonse Buzan on it, John Lee, and uh, Bob Malik, who's a, a Philly guy, and um, went to Europe and recorded a bunch, recorded his own record on MPS, actually, which is, uh, which is a little on the smooth side for me, but you might dig it. Anyway, this is really cool. It's got a lot of really great tunes on it. Uh, again, jazz rock fusion kind of a sound. Um, Jasper Van Toff is just amazing on piano, but um, he's all over on all kinds of keyboards on this, and I highly recommend it. Check it out. Um, this one came out in the U.S., and it's basically um, the same personnel in Miroslav Vitus on bass instead of John Lee. Uh, this is a killer record. This you can't miss out on if you're into jazz rock fusion at all. You're gonna love this one. It's got uh, some really hyperactive stuff on this. Um, <laughs> I played the grooves off of this. I would like to get the import copy actually because, well, I've had this forever and I'm sure it's got some wear and tear on it, but uh, this is a great record. And it's just called Live in Montreux. And again, Jasper Vantoff on all kinds of keyboards. And uh, the US pressing is super cheap. It's on the PA USA label. But in Europe, it came out on MPS. And uh, just fantastic, beautiful work. Another guy who recorded for MPS and who did some amazing, amazing work through the years and sadly passed away at a very young age was violinist Spinu Seifert. And this record, Man of the Light, is beautiful. It's more of a almost a spiritual jazz sound, a little bit less heavy on the fusion, more, um, I wouldn't say, like a, it's not a straight up sort of bebop jazz violin record at all. It's really got that sound that the kids today call spiritual jazz. Um, you really gotta hear it to hear it. Um, again, uh, Spinu Seifert is a violinist, also played saxophone on some early uh, albums, but here he's on violin. Both Joaquin Kuhn and uh, Jasper Vantoff are on it. Um, Vantoff only plays on one track. Um, Cecil McBee and Billy Hart great rhythm section on uh, bass and drums respectively but um, this is not an electric record there's one electric track but uh, most of it is acoustic but it's super hyperactive really wonderful to listen to and I highly recommend it on on MPS but the killer uh, record that Spinu Seifert did when he was uh, really ill actually and it's amazing to listen to the power of this man's music, as sick as he was, and he even looks sick in the, in the photo on the back, very pale, really sad, but uh, just a beautiful, beautiful record and a testament to his incredible artistry is this um, recorded for Capital. It came out in the U.S., widely available in the U.S. You should be able to pick it up for less than 10 bucks. Um, and what personnel on this, too. Uh, Seifert, of course, on violin, Jack D. Jeanette on drums, John Schofield on bass, Eddie Gomez on, I mean, on John Schofield on guitar, excuse me, Eddie Gomez on bass, Richie Birock, a wonderful pianist who played with um, Dave Liebman for years on piano, and Nana Vasconcelos on percussion. Just a, this is singularly powerful musical statement. Uh, I can't overemphasize how incredible this record is. It's like life transforming. And it's also very life affirming, which is really important in these difficult times. If you're feeling down, you should really go out and uh, look for this. Uh, the search is fun and the music is incredibly rewarding. Can't say enough good things about this record. Maybe it won't do it for you. It sure did it for me. And it's one of those records that's just very uplifting and beautiful. And uh, just uh, thank you, Spinu Seifert, wherever you are, for leaving that uh, document with us here on Earth. Okay, <laughs> back to normalcy. Um, I think I've discussed uh, this musician before in previous videos, um, but I've skipped over this record, I think. <laughs> anyway, Bjorn Jason Lind, a uh, really fantastic flute player, plays on the Yanni Schaffer records that I mentioned previously, um, recorded a bunch of stuff on Metronome in uh, Sweden, it was distributed in the U.S. on CTI, unbelievably. Um, this 
It was on Vanguard, and uh, I think it was on Metronome or Sonnet in um, in Europe. Always cheap though. A day at the surface, it's called. Um, it might have been called something different in Europe. I think Bike Voyage, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this is a great, really cool kind of mellow fusion record that's pretty brainy. It doesn't lapse into smooth jazz at all, but it's kind of mellow. It's kind of relaxing. And if you like like Jeremy Steig, people like that, uh, this is real similar to that. And this has got a great lineup. Um, Peter Robinson from uh, Brand X and Sun Shredder and Stoma Yamashita's band is on keyboards. Um, Yanni Schaffer is on guitar. Um, great drummer on this named Peter Sundell, who is in a group called Egba. And uh, this, this is a killer record. This is a great jazz rock fusion record. And can be had for next to nothing, especially the US version on Vanguard. Another guy, um, kind of a European guy, right? England's Europe. <laughs> it gets passed over a lot. Nobody seems to talk about him, and I've always really enjoyed his work, is uh, Courtney Pine. And in the early 80s, when the whole Young Lions thing was happening with Wynton Marcellus and Branford Marcellus, um, this guy kind of got caught up in that. And I don't mean like caught up like in an ego way, I mean like in a marketing way. They were definitely trying to market him as, you know, one of the young lions. And I just think that Courtney Pine had so much more to offer than sort of a rehash of 60s jazz. And a lot of what he does um, is really cool fusion. And it's a fusion that's intensely personal. He's from uh, England, but I think his parents or his relatives were from uh, the Caribbean. So he's done like a lot of sort of ska and reggae sounding stuff. Um, that was sort of pushed down, you know, and de-emphasized on these re early records he did. Um, but you can kind of hear it bubbling up in his playing. And, and honestly, this dude is a virtuoso on, on saxophones. I really love his tenor sound. It's very muscular, very dark. He has a great sound on soprano as well. And, um, and there was a lot of hype surrounding him. And the thing was, was it was justified hype. This is a great record. Um, Journey to the Urge Within, I believe this was his first. And again, released in the US. Uh, I, think, I think my copy's a cutout, maybe not. It's a promo for sure. Um, he did several. This I got for a quarter. <laughs> Extremely worth it. Um, this is called The Vision's Tale. And these, you know, people talk a lot about UK jazz right now. Um, this guy was at the leading edge, and, uh, and, and you know, there's a previous generation of UK jazz guys who are amazing, and there was a generation before Courtney Pine's version, I mean, generation who are amazing, and uh, you just should check out Courtney Pine. Nobody seems to talk about him, and uh, I just really like these records. They're really great. They have really great personnel. Um, Mark Mondesir is on drums, always one of my favorite players. Played with McLaughlin later on. Julian Joseph on piano recorded a bunch of cool CDs that I've gotten for a buck a piece. Um, Orphe Robinson on vibes. Um, just really cool records that nobody seems to talk about anymore. Again, more of an acoustic sound on these. He did do a ska and blue beat record later on. I don't have that. I think it only came out on CD. But um, Courtney Pine, don't sleep, as the youths like to say. Don't sleep on Courtney Pine. Here's some more classics. If you ever see this pop up, Mirage, it's a 70s jazz rock fusion record with Brian Godding on guitar. It's kind of his group. Brian Godding was in a psychedelic rock group called Blossom Toes. He also later on was in Magma. Uh, they kind of hired him as a session guy and then they asked him to come back. And I think he toured with them even. But um, Brian Godding's an amazing, amazing guitarist. Did a bunch of uh, really interesting uh, music after Mirage that sort of crossed over between free jazz and jazz rock that's uh, kind of in its own class. Anyway, this is a great record. Um, George Kahn is on, is on uh, saxophones. Steve Cook on bass. Dave Sheen 
from uh, Rogue Element on drums. Fantastic record, still cheap. It's on the Compendium label. And this is an honest to God jazz rocker. This is not, uh, there's nothing about this that's anything else but jazz rock. A couple more jazz rockers I'm going to talk about. My time is running out. Michael Urbaniak, always a quality name. Um, any of his Columbia records are worth getting, uh, as well as his Arista records. Um, there's so much great music <laughs> that this guy did. Uh, this album tends to get passed over because it was European only, but it did make it over in quantities to the U.S. as an import. It's called Smiles Ahead. It's got an amazing band on it. It's got uh, Woody Theus, also known as Transcending Sunship on drums. He absolutely kills on this. If you're a drummer and you want to hear something that's uh, going to knock your socks off, even in this day and age, uh, there's some drumming on this that's just amazing. And his drums sound beautiful. Um, I don't know how else to put it. But uh, the rest of the band is great. Ursula Dudziak's on it. Love her stuff. She does a lot of electronic percussion. Um, Harold Ivory Williams from Miles Davis's bands on keys. Uh, Robert Anthony Bunn, Tony Bunn on bass, a DC guy. Uh, Basil Farrington also on bass on some tracks. Um, Joe Caro on guitar on a few tracks, but uh, really the, the, the reason to get this is Transcending Sunship's amazing drumming. Smiles ahead. Check it out. I'm gonna wrap up with a super mega, ultra mega classic record in the genre that every one of you should have. If you're into the into the 70s sound, the Miles Davis Bitches Brew uh, in a silent way kind of sound, you must get this record. Coronarius Dans. It's an offshoot of another band called Secret Oyster. They're from Denmark. And all these guys, I think, maybe with the exception of one, were in Secret Oyster. And uh, the sound is definitely jamming Bitches Brew, uh, very dark, lots of um, fuzzy roads on this. Um, it's guitar, keyboards, bass, and drums. Um, they really did it right on this record. Uh, hits all the marks. You've got to get it. It came out in the U.S. on Inner City. I should do a whole Inner City episode of this. So much good records. So many good records on Inner City. This is um, on Steeplechase, this particular copy. So in Europe, it could be had cheaply. In the U.S., it could be had cheaply. Um, it's a classic. Just like the Good God record, it's a classic, in my mind, um, of the genre. Um, yeah, and Secret Oyster Records, um, maybe I'll talk about them. i got to do a little price check on them, but those are kind of pricey. But this could be had for next to nothing, so go out and get it. I'm going to do, um, try to keep the videos coming. I'm going to hit some other genres instead of just jazz rock fusion. I listen to other stuff, believe it or not. But, um, but I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. Um, it's always fun for me to do these. And uh, thanks so much for listening. And stay safe out there. Um, times are crazy here in 2020. And uh, just stay safe. And don't forget to vote.